There are moments in our lives, and for some of us in each day, when we feel as though the universe is against us. I'm not talking about when you fail a test or when you screw up and really regret it. I'm talking about the inevitable struggle of living with a mental illness. For some of you, that is a loaded word with no real meaning. We hear and see big words like depression and anxiety in public service announcements or on school. To be blunt, I don't look at them twice. Not because I don't care, but because I know that reading these posters do not express the way that people with a mental illness really feel. People like me. When I was 11, I had my first anxiety attack on the way to Leafs game. We were standing at the Oakville train station, me and my family, and I had never felt a greater panic than in that moment. I actually thought that the feeling would kill me. I told my mom I felt sick and we went home. Little did she know, this was the beginning of my struggle with anxiety and depression. As I started to grow up, I wanted to gain independence and distance myself from my family. I kept my thoughts boxed up. Years went by and this only made things worse. I made it work day by day until last winter when I experienced a whole new level of emotion. After I returned from a family trip to Amsterdam, I felt anxious and sad every day. I missed about three weeks of school, during which time I spent the days with my parents and with professionals who knew how to help me. There were some nights, one in particular, in which I questioned my own life. I sat in a doctor's office and she asked me if I'd ever thought about hurting myself. I replied, no. The truth is, I knew that if I said anything different, she would look up from her white form into my eyes and I would start to lose hope for myself. If I said it out loud, it would make it true. I didn't want to live here amongst everyone else anymore. But then I be began to imagine what life would be like here without me. An empty chair in class, a family of five into four. No more Margot standing with the boys at the back row of the grade photo. I realized that my brother would lose his best friend. It was at this time that my mom introduced me to a woman named Sandy, a psychologist. I resisted the idea mostly because I thought that going to therapy was something that was to be embarrassed about. Sandy was there for me whenever I needed her, and I felt that I could share anything when we were together. Sometimes I would go to see her, and I don't think she got out one word. She listens to me, supports me, and reminds me constantly that I am strong enough. 18 months later, and I see her every week. Anxiety and depression have stopped me from doing a lot of things. I couldn't go to Argentina for my service trip. I couldn't go to Tomogamy as a JOL. I distanced myself from my family and friends. I stopped looking forward to the rest of my life. The worst part, however, was that I felt embarrassed and weak. I didn't have a cast or a scar to prove it. It was all on the inside. And although mental health awareness is growing today, especially at Appleby, it remains an elephant in the room. It is simply an impossible feeling to imagine if you have never experienced it before. This is why it is imperative that you support your friends and family. 
One of the most common symptoms of a mental illness, such as depression, is the feeling that you're all alone, that there's nothing anyone could do to relieve your pain. I have realized that although this seems real in the moment, your brain is simply creating a distorted idea, a worst case scenario. In reality, there is so much that the people around you can do to help. If you think that a friend or family member is struggling, reach out. Don't give advice. Don't tell them to be happy. Just be there. Let them know that they are not alone. That one night last winter, I thought about God. I have never believed in God, and yet all I wanted in that moment was to have the comfort in knowing that someone was up there making sure that I would be okay. That one day, I would feel better. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't convince myself. Looking back at this moment over a year later, I've gained a greater perspective on life because of it. I still don't believe in God, but I do believe in myself. Regardless of if you believe in one God or five gods or none at all, everything will be okay. Bad things happen, but so do really good things. And if you live every day of your life thinking about all the bad things that could happen, you'll spend every day looking down. Our world is beautiful. And although there exists sad stories and bad people, it is also filled with good people and good stories. Tomorrow will come and you can open your eyes to a new day. In light of the recent tragedy in Manchester, there are many examples of people making good out of the bad. Last week, a suicide bomber killed 22 people outside of an Ariana Grande concert, many under the age of 18, and even a young girl only eight years old. Instead of secluding and fearing the world, the community stood up for their city. Cab drivers, many Muslim, were offering free rides to safety for anyone in the area. And many homeless men rushed to the scene to provide help. Next week, Ariana Grande is planning a fundraising concert in Manchester for the victims. Despite her fear, she has chosen to stand up against those responsible. She has chosen to finish this story well. During my darkest of times, my family gave me the motivation to keep pushing on. They made me feel worthy of love and attention. And now I'll forever try to repay them for the support they provide me whenever I need it. My senior year had been smooth sailing. My grades were good, I was close with my friends, and I hadn't felt anxious in a while. But about three months ago, my parents sat my brother and I down and told us that they were separating and that my mom was moving out. This was the first time I ever saw my dad cry. My family is the most important thing in my life. In the weeks following this night, I began to mourn the collected family I thought I had lost. Months went by, however, and I realized that although my parents no longer live under the same roof, we are still a family. Frank, Wendy, Fallon, Margot, William. That part will never change. When this happened, all that I thought I knew, I didn't know anymore. As you can imagine, this brought on a great deal of worry because I thought that the events of last winter were going to happen all over again. But look at me now, I'm just fine. Something bad may happen in your life, which could change everything. But amongst it all, try to believe in yourself. Try to remember how incredibly strong your mind is. Try to remember that the sun will rise again tomorrow. And if it doesn't, then we're all screwed. So don't worry too much about it. Yes, this may be sad, but that's not why I wanted to stand here today. I can think of many dark moments in my own life, but I know that so can each one of you. If you're here today, you've survived them. You have gone past the day 
that you thought would literally or simply felt like the last day ever. And even if there was no one there to help you, somehow you are here. Your mind is more powerful than you could ever believe. And even if no one is there to help you, you have the power to carry on. It is my hope that if you are struggling, there are people around you to make you feel safe and loved, just as my family and friends did for me. But even if you are stranded in the desert all alone, you must believe that you have the power to push on. If you're questioning your own life, tell a friend or a sibling or a parent or a teacher or call a helpline. Regardless of whether or not you believe in a God, you don't need to rely on someone else to control your fate. Take fate into your own hands. Decide that you want to pursue a great life. People will always try to give you ultimatums about your future. Will you become a doctor? Is that what you really want? Will you be truly happy one day? The truth is, I can't say that I will, but I also cannot say that I won't. Life is a crazy board game, and we're all tiny little pieces on it. Who knows what the next roll of the dice has to come. Last Friday, the varsity girls rugby team made history when we won the Division I CESA championships. Before the game, our coaches brought us into a huddle and one said this, after this game, regardless of the result, I want you to walk off the field thinking one word, fight. Becky was talking about rugby, but in my mind, she was talking about so much more. She was talking about life. Things will never be perfect. I'm only 17 and there are already plenty of bumps in the road. I will live with anxiety and depression for the rest of my life. I don't think my parents will ever live under the same roof again. I got rejected for my first choice program. I fear that one day when I am ready to start a family, I will pass on my mental illness to my child. No one can tell you what will happen tomorrow. If God somehow finds a way to let you know, then you're lucky. But for the rest of us, keep on fighting. Tomorrow will come, and it might be a really bad day, or it might be the best day you've ever lived. Take a breath, and trust me, you have survived every single bad day so far. Now please rise and sing hymn 352.